Hey guys, Dr. Whitney Costers here. Join me for five minutes while we try to untangle the definitions of civility and civilization according to Richard Connell in his short story, The Most Dangerous Game. Now I wanna focus exclusively on General Zeroff because he's a character who actually tells us that he tries to preserve the amenities of civilization and because I think the concepts of civility and civilization are integral to his identity. So let's try to figure out what kind of character we're dealing with here. Zeroff is an educated, well-read, avid hunter and former general who worked for the Tsar. He clearly had a lot of power and status in Russia prior to the Tsar being overthrown, but he now resides alone with his right-hand man, Butler, on an island in the Caribbean. But get this, he lives in a chateau. This is quite the inappropriate place to inhabit on a deserted island. Now, when Rainsford enters the chateau, we are told that he encounters medieval magnificence, a baronial hall of feudal times with its oaken panels, its high ceiling, its vast refectory tables, where two score men could sit down to eat. And about the hall were mounted heads of many animals, lions, tigers, elephants, moose, bears, etc. Now, Upon arriving, Rainsford, who is bedraggled, as you will remember, from having survived a sinking yacht, is not only given dry clothes at the chateau, but he's offered clothes made from the best tailor in London, a tailor who we are told ordinarily cut and sewed for none below the rank of Duke. And when he meets Zeroff, it's important to note how elegant, refined, and well-mannered Zeroff is. As he walks down his marble stairs in his evening clothes, Zeroff extends his hand to Rainsford and says, it's a very great pleasure and honor to welcome Mr. Singer Rainsford, the celebrated hunter to my home. After they meet, they sit down for a beautiful meal that's complemented with the finest linen, crystal, silver, and china. And when Zeroff offers Rainsford champagne, he says, we do our best to preserve the amenities of civilization here. Please forgive any lapses. We are well off the beaten track, you know. Do you think the champagne has suffered from its long ocean trip? Now, there are a few things going on here that I think Connell is trying to call our attention to. Such magnificence and excess, especially on a deserted island where no one but your human prey visits, are totally unnecessary. But I think it indicates that the way Zeroff defines civilization is by wealth, propriety, refinement, and status. He enjoys the finer things in life. Now remember, civilization is considered what is most advanced in society and culture, and civility is demonstrating good manners or propriety. I would argue that Zeroff certainly meets some of these criteria. Now you might be wondering how dead animal heads can be markers of wealth, power, and advancement, and even civilization. Because especially at this time in the early 20th century, it was a major luxury to travel to these exotic places, as people called them, um, or foreign places outside of Europe and America to hunt these animals. The fact that Zeroff has had the resources to afford the hunting equipment, travel, and has had the time that it takes to go on these safaris speaks to his wealth and status. And it also, ironically enough, symbolizes power that Zeroff can hunt and kill this game, even though it was never really a fair fight to begin with. It's noted that Zeroff has practically every animal head imaginable. And so he's grown bored and unchallenged by this game. This is why he has decided now to start hunting people. I think all of this is to say that to Zeroff, the peak of civilization is having the most advanced, refined and luxurious amenities, accommodations, lifestyle. So let's consider what kind of character we're dealing with here. Zeroff is an upper class, educated, wealthy and well-mannered guy who is also one of the most brutal, violent and disturbing characters that I've ever encountered in literature. This begs the question of what exactly civilized behavior and civilization are and how we define it. Is it really just about performing all the right behaviors and actions in public and then doing whatever you want in private? Or is it inherently being these things? Zeroff seems to think it's the former. I think a great modern example of this concept is Ted Bundy, the 20th century serial killer. This guy performed all the right actions. He was charming, kind, polite, 
um, good looking, articulate, educated, and he used these characteristics to lure his victims and people fell for it. Um, they thought he was good and decent and yet he was one of the most notorious um, and disturbing serial killers of our time. Now, would you consider him to be civilized since he performed all the right behaviors in public? Is, is that not what everyone is doing to some extent? Think about all the skeletons people have in their closets that sometimes the public becomes privy to. And it doesn't even have to be this extreme. Do you modify your behavior or actions in different contexts or when you're around a certain group of people? Is this just adaptability? Now, if you've ever read Civilization and Its Discontents, Sigmund Freud seems to think civilization inhibits our natural needs, desires, and urges. And he argues that it leads to a lot of unhappiness. And yet, it's so ingrained in us from a young age that we are willing to perform a little bit more propriety when we're out in public. Maybe you watch your language more, you put more effort into looking presentable, you try to seem more refined than you actually are. There are a variety of things that we do to create a nice, public, civilized image for others. Connell is definitely raising the question of what it truly means to be civilized or inhabit civilization. And controversially, I think society tends to think that the things that make us civilized are the very things that could render a Bundy or a Zeroth civilized as well.